What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how the MPU 650 works on a high level. And the reason I'm making this video is because I have some videos on my channel regarding how to use the MPU 650 on a programmatic level, but in doing that, I got curious as to how this thing works on a micro mechanical level. And so I did some research and I thought I'd share it with you guys. And I hope by the end of this video, you guys learn how this thing works and how accelerometers work in general. And if you do, I hope you like, comment, subscribe. That being said, let's jump into the high level overview of the MPU 650. Okay, so high level, first of all, what is it? Uh, we know it's an accelerometer, but first of all, what type of accelerometer? So the MPU 650 is specifically a MEMS, a microelectromechanical accelerometer. And what that means, it uses a combination of mechanical and electrical properties, specifically inertia and capacitance, to measure acceleration effects. And we'll talk about that in more detail further in this video. But some pros of MEMS is that they're small, cheap, and low power. So in particular, the MPU 650 is famous for being small, cheap, and low power. So that's what they try to market it as. And also producing MEMS offers economy of scale. So due to the nature of MEMS, you can actually manufacture thousands of devices in one batch, which makes the, the scaling of MEMS uh, really nice for companies who get it down. But however, the cons of MEMS is uh, they're generally more inaccurate than other types of, or MEMS accelerometers is that they're generally inaccurate uh, compared to other types of more expensive accelerometers, for example, piezo-resistive and piezoelectric acceler accelerometers, which use the piezoelectric effect and the piezo-resistive effect. And for those of you guys who don't know, the piezoelectric effect is if you put some pressure on a material, it, it will produce some, some voltage or charge. And for piezo-resistive, it'll be that if you put some pressure on a material, it will actually change the resistance of that material. So other accelerometers use those effects it's, it's more uh, sophisticated and more expensive to get such material, so that's why it's typically more expensive on average. And also another con of MEMS is that designing MEMS can actually be very hard. So these things are manufactured on the micro scale. So we're talking microns here, which are very difficult to make that. You need very sophisticated techniques. And in order to do this sophisticated uh, production, you need very expensive machinery. So those are the cons of MEMS. Another thing about this, a fun fact, is that it's created by TDK InventSense. So they're actually headquartered in San Jose, California, and they've been around for almost 20 years now. It's almost 2023, and when I'm filming this video, so they've been around for 20 years, let's say that. And they actually produce a lot of sensors. They're a big company, and you can go read about them. So the values you get from the MPU 650 are linear acceleration and angular acceleration, which makes a total of six degrees of freedom. So how do we get acceleration in the first place? Well, all MEMS accelerometers work on the principle of proof mass on a spring system. And this proof mass essentially is free to move around as the object accelerates. And as the object accelerates, the proof mass moves. And as the proof mass begins to move, it actually changes the distance between the proof mass and a fixed comb of electrodes that's fixed between the, the proof mass itself. And the distance between the proof mass and the electrodes as it's changing induces a capacitance and a change in capacitance, which can then be measured and translated into acceleration itself. So it's a very clever technique, and if that doesn't make sense, it'll probably make a lot more sense in the, the video I show in the next slide here. Looking at this diagram here, we see in the center we have the proof mass, which is in light blue. It's oscillating left to right as the object is moving. This is just some hypothetical situation. On the right and the left, we have the spring that it's attached to, which gives it the capability to move. And on the green, we have those fixed electrodes, which don't move. And as you can see in the yellow on the bottom right there, that would be a change in capacitance as the plate moves between the fixed electrodes. So it's changing capacitance, which in turn gets changed to acceleration. So that's the premise behind the acceleration values and how we get them. Now, even more interesting, just to show you guys, is how this thing looks on the microscopic level. So we can see the unit here is 200 microns. And zooming into it with an electronic microscope, we can see those same similar structures in the MPU 650 itself. So just in general, this thing is a pretty remarkable feat of engineering. And we can see by this diagram how this thing comes together and we can sort of translate it to what I showed you in the previous video. Just pretty interesting and I thought I would show that. Okay, so after all that, you may be wondering, how do we get the angular acceleration values? Well, it works on a similar premise. It does use capacitance, a measurable capacitance, which is then translated to acceleration. However, in addition to that, it does utilize the Coriolis effect to generate a force to induce the capacitance in the first place. And for those of you guys who don't know what the Coriolis effect is, it's the force in the yellow there on the right. And how this force is generated is that when a mass moves in a specific direction, let's say in this example on the right, in the, in the positive x direction, and we have 
an external angular rate, in this case in the z direction, I think that's uh, counterclockwise, it looks like it's, the Coriolis effect then generates a perpendicular force, okay? So it's this premise that generates a force that moves the proof mass on the gyro to get the capacitance change, which then gives us the angular acceleration. That'll make a lot more sense in these next upcoming two slides, and then we'll be done. So just a few more here, bear with me. So what role does the Coriolis effect play? So let's imagine what we have here, what's happening on the MPU 650 is we have oscillating masses that are attached like this, and they're both moving in the opposite directions with a, a specific velocity. And as they move in the opposite direction, imagine some rotation is applied to the object, the MPU 650. What's gonna happen is according to the Coriolis effect that these masses are going to move in the opposite direction of one another due to the nature of the Coriolis effect. And in turn, what happens is, after that, is that we get a directional proportional change to the capacitance between these two, um, between the electrodes once that happens, which in turn is translated to uh, angular acceleration. So it's due to this Coriolis effect that we have a change in the capacitance. Now, the proof mass for the gyroscope on the MPU650 has four components, so four proof masses which are attached like this. And it needs these four components to measure roll, pitch, and yaw, which are the three degrees of angular acceleration. And what happens with the MPU650 is that the Coriolis effect, in addition to the oscillation of these masses, changes the vibration patterns of all of these masses. So you'll see what that, that makes sense in the next slide here. So example, let's say we have this device is rolling in the X direction. And let's see what happens to the masses. So due to the Coriolis effect, you can see that they start vibrating up and down opposite one another, which induces a change in capacitance for the electrodes. And that's pretty much the premise of the angular acceleration. So now, after all that's said and done, this is the end of the video. I hope you have just a general high level understanding of how the MPU 650 works and how it's feeding us these values. It's a very fancy technique. We should really appreciate the engineering behind it. Uh, thank the company in Vincense to producing this amazing accelerometer. And if you guys did learn something, please just like, comment, subscribe. And if you're confused about anything, please let me know in the comment section below. Stay tuned to the next uh, video, guys. And thanks for watching my channel. I really appreciate it. Take it easy. Happy New Year.